So this battery is not adequate for the power this thing wants. Holy cow. Hello drone racers. Well, it seems like we're in a season of micro quads. Everybody's switching to them. Everybody's excited about them, not for full racing, but for just ripping around in their backyard. Being a little smaller, they're less intimidating. And if you're in places like Canada, they're a whole lot easier to use because they're pretty much all under 250 grams. So today we're gonna to take a look at another really good looking model on paper, the AR Fun Pro. This is a 95 millimeter brushless drone. It's available in bind and fly with pretty much the common protocols. So if you're a Spectrum, Free Sky, or Fly Sky guy, you're in good shape. I'm seeing more and more come that are gonna work with Futaba, but not this one. So the manual, for what we'll call it, is a single sheet of paper. At least it's printed in color, and you can tell the directions. So we have the essentials, but you have to know what you're doing. If you're a PPM receiver, which I hope not, because we should be serial. There we go. So if you're gonna hook up your own, there's the instructions. But for any of them that come, it should be on UART 3, which is pretty standard, and then instructions how to bind. So I like the new style of Ishin manual. It has a lot of information, but this does have the essentials and hopefully this works. There's little things that some people do that I really appreciate. Here's one of them right off the bat. M2, five millimeter, seven millimeter. Label your bags, label your screws so I know what they are. So if I have to get more, I don't have to guess. I don't have to get out my calipers and measure. That's really nice. It looks like a lo nice long Velcro strip. Let's see what else we've got in here. Now this is really nice. These are probably the best props you can get on the market right now. I've used them on my Lizard and they worked really well. A lot of people are using them on the KK90GT and they work really well there as long as you've got space for them. So I appreciate this. Don't come with some funky props. Come with the best that are on the market and give me three sets in three different colors. I really like that. And then some zip ties. Hopefully it's obvious what those are for. For the drone itself, I'm kind of used to things coming in custom cut foam and this is just wrapped in bubble wrap. So hopefully it survives. And the model itself. A couple nice touches I noticed right off bat. Does have USB, a real USB port, that's good. The battery is on here and it is a 2S battery, 2S500. I've got a couple of those, but I really wanna know. I know this is 3S compatible, just looking at the specs. Definitely 3S compatible. So it's kind of interesting that they came with a 2S, pretty small battery, but it does, does make it lightweight. Here we go, one of my requirements for these things. Look at those arms, those are thick. I wonder if those are as thick as the lizard. Caliper time. Wow, look at that, three millimeters. These are thicker than the lizard arms. They are narrower, so they need to be. Look how narrow those arms are. But that's partially also why this thing is so light. I mean, it doesn't weigh anything. I can just tell. I don't have props on it yet, so it's not totally fair, but still super duper lightweight on this. Fixed camera angle, but it looks like it's a pretty good angle. And if you try and force it into more, you're probably gonna get in the way of the frame here. So, but that's not, that's not bad. That's not too bad. We can work with that. Motors are 1104, 7500, so they're faster. So they will work better on 2S probably than the Lizard. I'm gonna mention the Lizard a lot because that's what the main competition is at the moment. The receiver is on top here and I can't tell what it is, and I also can't see a bind button, so I think I'm actually gonna have to remove this plate in order to bind it, which is not favorable, but tolerable, I guess. It's pretty easy, four screws. It looks like it will slide right off. If I recall correctly, because it doesn't say, this is only a 25 milliwatt transmitter, which is okay, but as fast as this thing might be, I might want it to go farther than that. It's partially gonna depend on what this receiver is. It does not look like an XM. If this had an XM plus in it somehow, then I would definitely want more than that because I would be sacrificing a ton of range. But I think they need to be paired. If the range of this is pretty small, the range of this can be small. But one of the things that got me curious is this hole right here. That sure looks like a VTX mounting hole to me. So I wanna know if I can upgrade this. I don't have the width problems that I do with the Lizard, so a wider camera like a Runcam Micro would fit in here just fine, I think. I think a Micro would fit in there without a problem at all. It would take up all the space. I would have to add a VTX, which could maybe go and connect through this hole. Could it handle the extra weight? I don't know though. I got a new scale, which will hopefully actually work for testing these kind of things. So I've got the Ishin Lizard here and we'll see how heavy it is. 69.4 grams. That's with no battery, with props. And the AR Fun Pro, if I include the props and screws and things, is 58, 10 grams, more than 10 grams lighter. That is a humongous amount. 
I am missing one side of Velcro, so that's not totally fair. Let's see if I just throw the Velcro in there. Does even does even count? Not enough to make it. There we go. Uh, one more gram. So it's right at 10 grams lighter. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. So it's partially due to these super thin arms, but they're super thick too. So they're super thin and super thick. Hopefully it's a good combination. They're darn near square. I just noticed they even beveled the edges, so hopefully that makes them last longer and stay in one piece. It's a really nice extra touch. The other thing I noticed is the bottom is completely flat, so hopefully the battery stays in place better. I have had a lot of problems with the lizard and the battery staying in place, partially because there's so much stuff on the bottom, it's hard to get a good flat surface. So hopefully, I don't think that'll be a problem on here at all. For these binding flies, I actually like to try them without going into beta flight and doing all my own programming because you should be able to just bind and fly it. So we're gonna see if that works here. I have to take the top off. It's kind of interesting. It needs Phillips screws. Like I don't see Phillips screws. Usually they're Allen wrenches, but it's Phillips screws. This is the Free Sky version. It kind of looks like an XM Plus, but there's only a single antenna coming off of it and it is um, soldered on, but it does say Free Sky on it. So I don't know exactly what this is. I don't know if it's an older model that they've got or it is something that they just didn't care and they printed Free Sky on it anyway. So this is always interesting to do by yourself. If somebody's got a good way to uh, bind these and press a button and plug in a battery by yourself, let me know. I would love to make a video about that. So I've got the button down. I've got the battery connected. So I'm sitting. There we go. So that blue light just turned off. I think that probably means I'm bound. And then it flashes. Yep, that definitely means something. So we'll unplug that. Plug that back in. You see there's no props on, so we'll have no throttle. Okay, if I hit my arm switch, what would I would expect to be arm? Nope. Nope. Nothing? Okay, so yeah, it's bind and fly, but they didn't set it up. So you have to go into beta flight. Hopefully it's a fairly up-to-date version of beta flight. I've had this happen a lot, so I'm actually going to link up in the corner to another video that I go through that sets up the process there and not do this one from scratch. So if you need help getting the beta flight set up, click there and then come back and watch the rest of this review. Okay, so at least in my view, I can see the voltage just barely. I think I've got the uh, OSD set up wrong. I need to change that a little bit, but I did turn off the artificial horizon that's terrible on these by default. Now we've got armed, and let's see how it looks. This is on the 2S, I should say. Let's see, turn to air mode. Uh, this is on the 2S that it comes with. Seems pretty quick. Uh, I think the defaults are PIDs are in place for beta flight. Wow, it's real fast. So that's, it goes up fast. Let's see, RSSI is not working on this one at least. Seems like it could use a little bit of PID tuning. So if I'm at full throttle, see how fast we're going. We are getting brownouts already. Whoa, uh-oh, uh-oh, where are we? Level, okay, so that's why I always recommend having stable Enable. I was able to flip right back to stable and it would at least level itself out and I could get to a point where I could see. So now we can go back. So we were out of range there. That was not a huge range out of it and my volt battery was sagging. My battery's sagging already. It was a little low already to be fair because it took me a minute to get the uh, get everything in place. But let's go try a 3S. Okay, now we have 3S in. We'll see how it does. And I've got the 2S on the charger. We'll see if we can get another flight in before it storms again. Okay, we are armed and we're not doing anything. Huh, That's it won't arm. The beeper won't work either, interestingly, but the ar air mode works. Huh. All right. Well, we'll check this out and see what's going on. Time to get a laptop. All right, I got the arm in 3S, but it was I had to do it connected to a computer, so we'll do some more testing on that here shortly. For now, I think I can at least get it to fly. There we are, armed. There we have propellers. Whoa, oh, I, that was a desync. 
That was a brownout or a desync or wow is fast. Come back. So this battery is not adequate for the power this thing wants. Holy cow. Battery's complaining, but I can barely see it. Yeah, I'm gonna ruin this battery. Worth it. Wow! <laughs> Oops. Wow, huge potential for this thing. This thing flies. It flies fast. It's big weak point are these batteries. I don't have good enough batteries for it. These are both 30C, which are obviously not nearly enough for this thing. Also this battery connector, I don't think can keep up. So I'm gonna be replacing this with an XT30, just like I have on the Lizard. So the big question is, which is better? The AR Fun Pro or the Ishin Lizard? You know what? I think it's a little too early to determine. This was just a first flights, an unboxing of first flights video. I've got to do some more testing on this, but I think the AR Fun Pro 95 is going to be faster, possibly significantly faster than the Ishin Lizard. But does that mean it's the best one for you? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be the right one for everybody because it's, it's fast. It screams, but it doesn't work out of the box quite as well. It's not quite as easy to get going. The Lizard is a lot more polished. It's a lot better to just be able to grab. If you kind of know what you're doing, you can get the Lizard going and it works really well. This takes a little more work. I'm still not sure what's up with the 3S and it not turning on. I think it's probably a voltage setting in beta flight, but I'm gonna have to play with that a little more. I'm gonna have to change the connector. These just can't keep up. These, these batteries just won't do it. I had a brownout. You could see the OSD flashing at me the whole, pretty much the entire flight up for low voltage, but it wasn't really that the battery was low because after I checked it afterwards, I was still at 50% capacity, which leads me to believe that the problem is these connectors and maybe just partially this battery is not made for this type of flight. Better batteries that are on the way will give us a much better indication. Um, I had a fairly big crash and it handled it just fine. As far as I can tell, there's at this time, there's no damage except for the props, which I think will just bend right back into place. These props are pretty durable and do pretty good about bending back into place. I didn't tear them or I don't think they're ruined. I think everything is just as good as new. I guess I will find out once I uh, do some more flights, which is definitely gonna happen very soon. This thing on 3S, man, I thought the lizard was fast, but I'm pretty sure this thing creamed it, just a couple of mods, and it's just gonna blow the socks off of anything I've flown. So if you wanna see more videos about this, make sure you subscribe so you get all the notifications about it because there's definitely gonna be more. I can't wait to get this thing back up in the air with more power. If you found this useful, leave us a like and comment down below with which one would you rather have at this point, the Lizard or the AR Fun Pro? I, I love the Lizard, but the vibration problems I had with this. I've had to do a lot of modifications to this too, just to get those working. I, I didn't notice that at all on this. There was no vibration in this at all by comparison, even with the 3S on full power. Um, I could barely keep up with it in my head, but there was no vibration. It was very, very smooth, very, very fast. So I don't know, I'm gonna reserve judgment for the moment. I like them both. I like them both a lot. But there's one thing they won't do, either one of them very well, that I have something else in this scale that I'm going to try very soon. So stay tuned for that also. So until next time, remember, I, I really don't think you can go wrong with either one of these. I think they're both really, really sweet and we are being very spoiled by options right now.